Buff's body, we're getting ready to do the how-to demonstration, giving observation tips, drawing what we see. All right, here we go, everyone. Step one. Preparing the paper. You have a couple choices. You can either find a long, thin, rectangular piece of paper or cut one from your sketchbook. We have our sketchbook here. You're gonna open up to the first page where you see it that it's empty on this side. I've been working with my sketchbook. Let's try this one. All right, so you're gonna open up to here. I've already done this. So make sure it's creased. If you haven't creased it, make sure you do that. Then you're gonna take this sheet and you're going to line it up with that creased fold and then Crease again. Once that's done and you've creased it a couple times, you have a couple more choices. You can either cut this or draw on this side. I've already got a piece of paper here, so step one for me is done. Step two. This is where we get to begin to practice our observation drawing. So make sure you have a pencil ready, ready for your tool. Get a pencil here. And you also need um, slide five of the slideshow where it showed that realistic looking cricket. I'm gonna show you here. I don't know how, how it'll show up on the screen, but it's this one. And you're gonna wanna look at that while you draw. Lots of times when we're drawing together, we do what's called a guided practice. Today, I'm gonna to show you what I'm doing and how I'm thinking as I'm drawing. And then you're gonna use your observation eyes, your eyes of a scientist on your own, looking at slide five, the cricket. One thing I noticed is I need to draw my big shapes first. So I'm gonna put the head here and the head looks like a teardrop to me. So I'm gonna draw a teardrop type shape. And then I'm going to sketch the next shape, which is the thorax. This is the head. Then we have the thorax. And that looks like a shield. It's a really cool shape. But I haven't drawn this shape a lot. So I'm sketching the lines. So I get it right. Draw it light till you get it right. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then this looks like a stretched out letter V and it kind of comes up here. All right. Oh, yep. I like that. So now I can darken it in if I want. Found the lines that I want. So I've got the head. I've got the thorax. The next part is the abdomen and it comes all the way out. But on top of the abdomen are wings and the wings go, they're even longer than the abdomen, the body part of the insect, in this case, the cricket. So that's going to be my wing and then the abdomen is another interesting shape that's overlapped and it comes all the way over whoops i should have been drawing light to get it right Whew. good thing i caught myself okay i'm still not drawing the details just the big shapes first now i'm going to look real close see if there's any more big shapes i have one two three four i you know what I see the one of the legs, one of the six legs is a bigger leg because they can jump like nobody's business. So that leg is also a big shape. So I'm gonna draw that next. And I hope you notice that I'm sketching these lines. Ooh, and this is like an upside down letter L. That's a trick I have. I sometimes name the shape, something I've already drawn a lot. So I trick my brain so that it thinks it's easy. And this just looks like a uh, upside down letter seven maybe. And then two little spikes there. There's a back foot. All right. Now, how many legs does an insect have? If you said six, you are correct. So we have five more to draw. But let's double check this. Draw the big shapes. Yep, I've drawn all the big shapes. Now I'm gonna draw the medium shapes next the eye is a medium shape so i'm going to get that in there those antennae they could be medium shape 
I don't have enough room here, so I'm going to curve my antenna. Even though the the picture I'm looking at, the antennas are sticking a different, or going a different direction. I'm going to improvise just a little bit because I want to make sure I get those. I like to draw those. And another medium shape would be this front leg. It's coming off here. Looks kind of like that. And I think of legs like lines, and I look at the direction that the lines go. Oh, and this kind of longer feet things. Okay. All right. And then I just see part of that leg because this is legs in the back. So we don't see all of it. So I'm going to put that there. And I'm noticing already that I'm getting some things correct. And I'm, I'm uh, getting some things that are not as accurate as um, the picture. But I'm okay with that because I haven't drawn crickets a lot. And I'm just learning how. So I am just going to give myself patience because that way my brain will stay open to the observing. This one outlines and overlaps that other leg. All right, let me double check. I've got one leg, two leg, three leg, four leg, five leg. I need to show evidence of one more leg and I see it here. It's like the backwards upside down seven. Okay. I'm looking, I think I got all the parts on the outside. Now, I am going to do this. I'm going to erase those pencil lines where I overlapped because otherwise that's not going to look right to the eye. So this leg is in front of the other leg. So I don't see parts of that. So I'm taking care of that now before I outline. Now I'm going to go to step three. Break up your space any way your artist brain says. Listen to your imagination. All right. Well, my imagination says that I think it'd be cool to repeat this line here and repeat it one more time. And then I'm going to break up this just by making some lines here. And uh, uh, there we go. And then here, just for grins and giggles, I'm going to do some circles down here. Because I like to draw circles, I think they add a little bit of playfulness. And I get to use my imagination on the patterning and breaking up the space. And I'm also going to give my cricket a smile. Because he's happy to be being drawn. All right. I've done step three. This was step three. So take a minute to look. I broke up the space. So now I have areas to color in. Let's see what step four is. I cannot wait. What is step four, Spotty? Let us see. Oh, I knew it. If you all knew that step four was outlining pencil lines you are correct give yourself a pat on the back and spotty scotty is giving you a flying ovation all right now if you would help me by using your observation eyes to see if there's any that i did any parts of pencil lines that i did not outline what do you see spotty oh oh you're right Kids, I bet you saw it too. If you noticed that not all my circles were outlined, good work. Your observation eyes are on. It's really important to outline all of your pencil lines for a professional result. And I really like to take just a minute and erase the pencil. And I'm going to show you a trick here too. Do you notice I have my... Um, pointer finger and my thumb in between where I erase. That makes it so that the paper doesn't wrinkle and rip. So I always just kind of move my forefinger and my thumb around, making sure that I erase all the pencil lines. I am so almost done with step four. I'm feeling so good. Good job, brain. Good job, eyes. 
Good job, hands. Okay. And I can always erase more if I see it in the refine stage after I'm done. All right, let's see what step five is. Step five is add patterns. All right, so you, I can go ahead and add patterns right with my outlining marker. I do not need to um, outline them first or use pencil first for this. So here, I think I'm just going to do the letter V over and over and over. Patterns are just repeated lines or shapes, and they can also be repeated colors. So if you would just like to add colors for your patterns, you can. If I were going to do that, I would probably break up more space so it's more interesting. Okay, I'm just going to dot these wings so it, so it looks like the wings are a different texture than the abdomen and the thorax is a different texture than the head. I like that. Sometimes I just like to thicken some lines because I think that's a really cool effect. Not every line, otherwise to me I think it looks too thick. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a cute little eye. There we go. I've done step five. Let's see, oh, there's so many steps here. You're working so hard. I didn't even make enough steps of my post-its. After step five, we have step six, which is my favorite part, add color. So at this point, I think you know how it's done. So I'm gonna um, go off the video and you get to add your color any way you want. I know for me, I like to pick three or four different colors and repeat them because it adds balance to my mine. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use colored pencils on the inside. And I did put here, there's a tip. Sometimes I do a crayon outline so I can even take a crayon over my black. If I want, I'll show you that. Oopsies. I went out of the line. That's okay. Oh, I kind of like that. Ooh, I just see if you keep your listening observe or your listening artist brain on I just thought you know what I'm not going to use this as an outline I'm going to color the background but not yet you can also do a, a marker outline with crayon carefully colored inside I can't wait to see what you can do with your wonderful brain your hand your eyes and your imagination we'll see See you soon. I'll show you a picture of my finished Cricut. Can't wait to see you. All right. Ta-da. I hope you like what Spotty and I colored. Um, we are at almost our last step. We now get to refine, refine, refine. Make three areas even better. I'm going to use my eyes, and I want you to see if you can guess what areas I might fix up. I noticed that I forgot a circle dot there, so that'll be one. And I also noticed there's a couple areas that I could kind of darken here. So that's one. And I'm going to really darken my antennae. So that's two. And then, oh, I see one more spot. So I'm going to make three areas better. Oh, I like that. Kind of highlights that leg. And then when I get done, I get to reflect. Reflect is thinking about what you did and asking yourself a couple questions. The reflection I'm going to ask myself is, first one, what need did I meet while making art? I met my power need because I am learning how to draw um, 
from realism more. I'm using the eyes of a scientist and it's really a goal of mine to be able to illustrate, draw accurately. And then what did I learn about observational drawing? I learned that I have to slow way down. And sometimes I need to relook at what I'm studying, like the cricket, and find where my eye is at and make sure I slow down enough. I also noticed that I used more than three to four colors for my color scheme. So next time I think I'm gonna try to uh, use less colors and see if I like it uh, better, less better, or differently. All right, that's it. Have a blast. Can't wait to see yours. Ta-ta for now.